guys want to know what it's like to try to get from the amateurs to the pros and what does an actual day look like that so I'm gonna show you what a day looked like for me so today we're gonna to be doing a day in September when I was 16 years old I was a junior in high school and I'm gonna basically take you through everything that I would do start to finish wake up to go to bed uh, so let's get it cracking so first of all my day would start at about seven o'clock in the morning because I had school at 850 and every day before school I wanted to wake up early and get to the gym to shoot so I'd wake up at seven in the morning and the very first thing on my agenda was jumping rope I was crazy about getting my feet right and jumping rope was the hallmark of that process so I wake up at 7 a.m. First thing I do before I eat breakfast is I jump rope. And I would do it on my mom's porch. It was a wooden porch with planks that had big grooves in between them, so it was really uncomfortable. And it was freezing cold, even in September. I was in Maryland. So I would go out there in a jacket and a beanie, and after some time, my hands would get cold. Actually, the rope would get kind of cold. but. I would jump for about 10 minutes. Inside from my porch was my mother cooking pancakes. Come in, chow down on my pancakes, and then I would jump in the shower. I was always in a real, real hurry, bullet off to school. So I'd get to school and I would meet one of two of my coaches who was always there, either the head football coach or the head basketball coach, and they would let me immediately into the gym. They knew that's why I was there. So. My goal was always to shoot for either 30 minutes to an hour before I ever got to class. So I'm getting to the school around like 7.55, 8, 10, something like that. And they let me in the gym and lock the door behind me. So I would get about 30 minutes to 45 minutes of good quality shots in. And this time for me was all about like free throws, a lot of uh, form, turnaround, fadeaway jumpers. I wasn't running around and sweating too much. And I'll tell you why in a second, you'll think I'm disgusting. Uh, after I would shoot for about 45 minutes, I'll go into the locker room and take a nap on the bench in the locker room. Usually it was like 10, 15 minutes of a nap and I wouldn't even shower, I'd just go to class after that. That's why I said it was disgusting. But hey, I was a kid. So at this time, class starts, it's 8.50, everybody's rubbing the sleep out of their eyes, they're groggy, but I'm pretty much done for the day as far as a normal workout would go. Like an average kid that age doesn't work out in a day the amount that I had worked out before class started, which was my jumping rope to get my quick feet and then about 45 minutes of shooting. So class was really like a rest period for me because I was already kind of tired. So basically my school day starts and my junior year and my senior year, I was in a weightlifting class with our head strength coach. His name was Coach Connor. So at some point during the school day, I would lift weights for an hour with him and the football team. That class was really just for the football players, but myself and one or two other basketball players were in it. <clears throat> so I would get to lift, you know, all squats, bench press. We would really get after it, hand cleaning. My school was a football school. So these guys were in there on, you know, some, some serious like adrenaline. They weren't in there screwing around. The, my school was like a state championship football type school. So I was in there feeding off of that kind of energy. And that was maybe around like 12 o'clock, one o'clock. Then I go shower and get back to class. So by now I've gotten about two and a half, three workouts in and my classes are actually serving as a rest period for me. I didn't care too much about school, to be honest. School got out at about 3.15. So 3.15, the very first thing that I do is I eat my meals that I had previously packed. Uh, my mom always packed me lunches, you know, as, as a good mother does, but I would pack extra food knowing that I would stay after school. Peanut butter and jellies. But by 3.30, I was immediately back to my workouts. But in September at my school, it wasn't basketball season yet, but it was volleyball season and the gym was taken up by a volleyball team, which meant that I had to wait to get in. So I would go into the locker room and do ball handling for about two to three hours by myself until the gym was freed that I could get in it. So basically 3.15, I eat a snack. 3.30, I get my butt into the locker room. There was a big space in between the locker room benches where I could do ball handling and move around a little bit. I could not run in there, but
but I could do like quick feet type drills while I'm doing ball handling. But my favorite thing to do was lay on the bench and dribble the ball while I was laying down because I could do crossovers underneath the bench and then I would sit on the bench and just dribble the ball while sitting. Now, another thing that I did during this time that I don't recommend you doing was I was a big programmer when I was in school, like software developer. It was one of my hobbies. And I loved to program on my calculator. You remember those smart scientific calculators? So what I used to do to pass the time was program on one hand with my calculator and dribble the ball with the other hand and then switch. You can imagine that if you're handling the ball for three hours straight in a locker room, it gets kind of boring because I wasn't doing this once in a while. I was doing this every single day. So basically to zone out and completely pass the time, I would be programming fun games on my calculator. I would try to come up with like innovative applications to program. I remember I made like NBA Jam. I tried to make like NBA Live. I made like Space Invader type games, just, just silly stuff really. And it allowed me to get through those hours of work. But the ball handling was really essential work for me. So by now it's about um, 6 p.m because I started at 3.30. I went for somewhere between two and three hours of ball handling, and now the gym is finally open, so I get in the gym to finish off my workouts with the ball, to do shooting and attacking the rim. By attacking the rim, I mean like first step type dribbles, finishing around the rim, dunking, and then obviously spot shooting and turnaround jumpers, shooting kind of stuff. Now, now this was, my most intense work between the hour of about 6 p.m. and 7.45, 8 p.m. This was when I was running uh, with the ball. I was you know, pulling up for jumpers. I was dreaming about crossing people over and shaking people up and dunking on them. So this is my real heavy workout time. And that combined with my ball handling put me somewhere between three hours and four hours of ball in my hand work during the day. And my rule every single day was three hours of ball in my hand work. That was my rule. And I never broke it, ever. So every single day I had a ball in my hands for three hours. And that was how I did it uh, for these days. As a 16 year old in September, I was living in Maryland and I was a junior in high school. So what happened next? It, now it's about 7.45, 8 o'clock, and I would go home where my mom would have made dinner for us, and we would eat dinner together. It was just her and I, and we would eat sometime around 8 o'clock, 8.30, and we would always sit and watch TV also. We loved to watch American Idol together. We would sit and watch some kind of like forensic files special. This was back before YouTube and, you know, everybody watching their media on computers and phones. So we would sit in front of the TV and watch, you know, mainstream TV and news channels. And we had a great time. So this would put me at about maybe 930 because we would watch TV for anywhere from like an hour and a half to two hours. And then it was at this time that I got in what might have been my most important work, which was my plyometric work. So at about 945, 10 o'clock, I would go out into our porch and our front yard and our driveway and do my air alert program, which was my vertical jump program and my sprinting program, and then a little bit more quick feet work. And this would take me somewhere between 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. Now the air alert program was a jump training program that I bought out of Slam Magazine when I was like 14 or 15 years old. And I just fell in love with it and continued to do it. Even though it was only a six week program, or it might've been 12 weeks, I just never stopped doing it. So it was built to start and finish over the course of two months or three months, but I did it for I think like four years straight without stopping. And that's what I would do at nighttime around 10 o'clock. I would do air alert, I would do like, you know, single leg jumping, um, these really crazy jump rope drills that came with the program. And then a lot of sprinting too. My mom had a long driveway that went a little bit downhill. So I would do sprints down the driveway and walk back up, sprint, walk back up. And then there was just so much jump training going on. Uh, I was always, it was always my favorite time of the day of working out. I loved jump training. Uh, I'd stretch a lot during that time. I had two dogs 
that lived with me and my mom, and they would always be around when I was like jumping rope. And they would come as close as they could, and they learned not to get too close because they would hit with the rope. And uh, they would just hang out while I was doing air alert, and trying to get my vertical up. So this brings me to about 10 p.m. Uh, I'm sorry, this brings me to 11 p.m. And about 11 p.m., I'm done with everything. I shower, I might eat a snack, uh, might watch a little bit more TV, but uh, everything's pretty much finished. It's like uh, midnight that I would go into my room and do stretches. I stretched every single night when I was young. I was really crazy about trying to get limber. So at nighttime, every single night of my life, when I was a kid, I was stretching. Stretch my hamstrings, my calves, my quads, my Achilles, everything, my groin, you know. So midnight, I'm stretching. and. This was also the time when I would try to listen to my self-help material, which I was really big on as a kid. I loved self-help material, and my flavor that year for me was actually a Tony Robbins disc, disc set that I had bought called Personal Power. So I'd go into my room alone and put him on my bedside radio CD table uh, or on my CD player, like my disc man, and I would listen to Personal Power by Tony Robbins where he would talk about getting your mind right, getting real with yourself about your goals, you know, not BSing yourself, uh, having good self-talk while I was kind of stretching and winding down for the day. So after that, I would kind of lay in bed and watch TV for maybe 30 minutes or an hour, and I'd usually fall asleep around 1 a.m., maybe 1.30, 2 a.m., and then wake up the next morning and do it all over again. Now. I'm telling you this in terms of a day in the life because this was a day every single day. This wasn't like a random occurrence every once in a while. For September, not in season, 16 years old, this was where I was in terms of a day in the life. So total training time for basketball was about five hours total. That includes ball in the hand training, shooting, ball handling, and then plyometrics or athleticism training, and then strength training, and then stretching. So the total time of all that together was somewhere around five plus hours, minimum of five. And during my day, I would have to actively be social dodging, which is just a term that I use to talk about like deflecting the temptations of other people inviting you to do things, which is very common in school because you're always running into people that want to pull you in this and that direction, want to talk to you, want to be your new friend that week, want to introduce you to some hobby or invite you somewhere. So a lot of my day was dedicated to social dodging. As you can tell in my daily schedule, there was no time allocated for homework. That's because I never did homework at all, ever. Uh, I detested homework. I, I loved learning and I loved the concept of school, but I didn't like how school was executed. Also, as you can tell, I smelled really bad all day long because I didn't shower. I would work out before school, during school, after school, and never shower until nighttime. Sometimes I would shower after weightlifting class, but not always. And I dressed really bad. Like I went to school in workout clothes and then worked out in them and dribbled and then smudged my dirty fingers onto my shirt. So I had like dirt on my shirt, dirt on my fingers. My fingers were always taped up because they were cut from dribbling too much. So I always had like really dirty, disgusting tape around like three or five or all of my fingers all the time. And it was really gross when I would like ask people in class for pencils and they would look at my fingers like with disgust. My hands would be black during the day when I would go to school. So my, my shirt would be all smudged and dirty. So, uh, you know, I smelled bad, I dressed bad, and also I had headphones in all the time. I would make playlists on MP3 players. So I would make playlists and walk around with headphones all day, which was part of my social dodging. I didn't want people to talk to me. I didn't want them to tell me what they were doing, what movies they were going to see, what parties they were going to. Like, I didn't care. I had a jam-packed day of five hours plus of working out, which was not easy to accomplish, and I needed to get it done. So, what else? Um, yeah, so my classes, my school classes really served as a rest period in between workouts because it was like I would wake up and do plyos and then shoot and then have class to rest and then lift and then have class to rest. You know, and then immediately when class is over, I go to my workouts. And, you know, class was really just a rest period for me. And then, yeah, also a big part of my day was. Eating junk food was a sin to me. 
like you know fast food sodas uh, sweets candy bars you know never a part of my day you know the other sins of, of that time for me was going to the movies was a sin um, going anywhere with a friend was a sin to me if anybody ever asked me to do something or go somewhere a uh, red light immediately went off in my head that said like warning warning <laughs> must get out of this situation without looking too insane or too socially awkward I never went anywhere with anybody or did anything like I can't stress that enough I never went to my friends houses even to do so much as watch TV never I, w I would never go to a friend's house to watch TV like meet their parents say how you doing just hang out like throw a backpack somewhere you know that was something I did maybe in like you know seventh and eighth grade but at this time in my life never what else um, oh yeah at this time I was uh, six foot six and 170 pounds I was in 11th grade I remember measuring my vertical jump with one of my best friends and it was 26 inches 26 rather pathetic I must say so my gym privileges they were given to me by my coaches my head basketball coach Arnie McGacky and the head football coach coach Connor Rick Connor great guys and the reason they gave me these gym privileges was because I never violated them ever I took these privileges as like my religion like gospel they told me don't let anybody else in the gym and lock the gym behind you they used to lock me in the gym actually and say don't let anybody in so all throughout the day while I was working out I could see through the crack in the gym door people's eyes like looking in like seeing what's going on in there and then if they knew me they would knock on the door and yell Joe let me in let me get a shot up and if it was in between songs on my headphones then I could hear them or if they knocked loud enough I could hear them but I would never let anybody in I would walk over and explain to them through the crack in the door I'm sorry I'm not allowed to open it <laughs> like coach Connor said I can't open it and that happened like five to ten times a day sometimes it would groups of kids coming to knock on the door Joe let us in it's okay you know we just want to come in for fi five minutes no 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 can't do it guys so I really guarded and protected my gym privileges. That was a big part of my day because without those gym privileges, my day couldn't have worked. Like you see how delicate and difficult it is to get five hours in if you don't have gym privileges. Like even with my gym privileges, I still had to work out in a locker room for two to three hours a day. Uh, so while I was working out, I always had a 55 to five ratio of work time that gave me one hour which meant that if I was in a gym for an hour I had to work out for 55 minutes in order to make that hour count so I was allowed to rest for five minutes and I felt a lot of guilt about that five minutes that I rested as if I was lying to somebody but that brings me to my next point which is that I wasn't being held accountable by anybody like I wasn't reporting my workouts to anybody nobody was keeping track of my hours I wasn't uh, like being trained by anybody Nobody was asking me, did you work out today? Did you work out this week? What have you done? Really, nobody even really noticed what I was doing, except the strength coach, the football coach, my head basketball coach. N nobody had any clue. You know, everyone was busy living their own life. And that includes like people in my own family. I mean, I was living with my mom at the time, so she knew that I was working out a lot. But I think that for all she knew, I could have been like, just kind of hanging out around school, working out here and there, you know, just kind of putzing around. But uh, really nobody knew what, what I was doing. Um, there was no coach holding me accountable. I wasn't reporting my workouts to like my dad or anybody. No scouts were looking at me or like checking in on me saying like, hey Joe, are you keeping up with work? Like we're looking forward to having you come visit our school because I wasn't being scouted by anybody. So everything that I was doing was just for me, in my own head. There was a voice in my head that would yell at me if I didn't work hard enough that day. And it would berate me. So I had to work. And it was really the only thing that was holding me accountable, was myself. Okay, also at this time, like I wasn't a prospect on a national stage in any regard. I wasn't even a prospect on the state level. Like I wasn't ranked. Not nationally, in, in our state, I wasn't ranked. I wasn't on any radar in terms of like potential state all-stars or nothing like this. Like I was, I was nobody in terms of basketball, but I was working like this every hour and minute that I could because I knew that I was going to the NBA. And, and part of why I knew I had to work was because I knew that nobody else thought that I was going to the NBA. So the last thing I'll say is that it might sound like that's a rough day, and in retrospect, it sounds to me like a rough day, but that was not a once in a while thing. 
That was every single day. So as a young person right now, if you think you could wake up and put in a single day like that, like try to be honest with yourself and if that's realistic or not, could you put in a single day like that? That's difficult. Could you, after putting in a day like that, could you wake up the next day and do it again? I really doubt it. And the reason I say that is because I would say nobody at my school ever put in one day like I did or even half of a day like I did. And I know because I was in the gym at all hours when it was available. So I never saw somebody even put in half of a day like I was doing. So I can say with confidence that you can't, you can't do it. It's difficult, nobody does it. So could you imagine putting in a day like that and then waking up the next day and doing it again? It's, that would be tough. Well, try doing it for an entire week. Try doing it for an entire month. You know, I did that basically every single day and I never missed a day. I don't care if it's Friday, don't care. Saturday, Sunday, doesn't matter. Coach says the gym is closed today, doesn't matter. Oh, it's raining today, so the baseball team is using the gym, doesn't matter. I would find a way to get it done. Holidays, didn't matter. Seven days a week, every single day, looked, looked like this. 